Thanks for coming here in the rain. Do you like the rain? I like the rain too. The rain is important. The rain is good. Hello, Lisa. How are you? Awesome. All right. I know you guys have never seen this before. You've never seen this situation before. I stand here for the microphone situation. Uh, you've never seen this before, but sometimes people get into an argument. <laughs> what? Have you guys ever seen your parents argue? Jonathan, don't answer that. <laughs> All right, yes, sometimes people argue, and today in the gospel story, the Bible story, the disciples were arguing. Gasp on three. One, two, three. <gasps> Thank you. That was a really good gasp. Uh, they were arguing about who is the greatest. Now, how would we decide who's the best disciple? Anybody have an idea? How would you decide that? No ideas? Okay. Well, they were arguing about maybe who knew the most about the Bible, who had told more people about Jesus, ones who went to church the most, who gave the most money. I don't know what they were arguing about. And Jesus said, what were you guys arguing about? Who's the greatest? Knock that off. Because, let me show you who's the greatest. And who is the youngest child here? Kinesla, Minya, Mas. Kenya. You guys, in three, who said this He grabbed, a, he uh, brought a little child up in front and said, whoever blesses these children blesses me. And guess what? I think the argument stopped right then and there. Because they were thinking about other things other than how to bless children and the most vulnerable and young and growing in the community. We too at Pilgrim remember that what grounds us and shapes us in many ways is we have a school, we have Sunday school, we have BBS, we have a summer program, we have youth programs, we do so many things with children. Hacemos muchas cosas con niños. Y eso nos ayuda en estar presente a Cristo, conectado a Cristo. This helps us stay connected to Jesus. Let us pray. God, we thank you that when an argument starts, you Remind us to think about what's best for the children. Help us to think about that in whatever situation we're in. And help us to have joy that when we welcome children, we welcome you. And bless the children as they are welcomed into Sunday school, into a time of learning and growth. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All, right. All right. We continue in Sunday school or in worship. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. 
Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 116 is read responsibly. Save me, O God, by your name. In your insight, defend my cause. Hear my prayer, O God. Give ears to the words of my mind. For strangers have risen up against me, and the ruthless have sought my life, those who have no regard for God. Behold, oh, God is my helper. It is the Lord who sustains my life. Render evil to those who spy on me. In your faithlessness, destroy them. In your faithfulness, destroy them. I will offer you a free sacrifice and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. For you have rescued me from every trouble, and my eye looks down on my enemies. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Where are these angels among us? No, I'm just kidding. 
but uh, we do have the opportunity to lift up angels in the Bible and how they may still be working to bless us. Uh, has anyone ever thought that angels might exist? Might exist, yeah. All right, that's good enough because I've never preached on uh, angels to this depth. I'm gonna learn something. I think all, all of us will learn something as well. Next slide. The uh, first few weeks we'll ponder these questions. Do angels really exist? What do angels do? Where might we see angels? And fourth, what messages to angels bring? So we're very much looking forward to that exploration. Now to the word for today. Jesus catches the disciples arguing. What were you doing as you, what were you arguing about as you went along the way? As I said already, we human beings are prone to argue. Some arguments are worth having, others are not. So I'd like to get clear on Maybe some of those that are not worth having. Uh, there's these funny arguments that break out on social media. And one of them is, is water wet? Not worth our time, especially when it's raining. We know what happens when it rains. Second, second, I, I thought this was really funny. Two guys online ended up arguing, how many times do you work out a week if you work out every other day? <laughs> it's a math problem, right? Uh, number three, do you eat? Do you eat or drink soup? What do you think? Let me hear some responses. Oh. Eat, drink. See, we're not. We're gonna. We can argue about that all morning. Let's <laughs> get smart. And then, of course, the classic. It means a little something extra as a Chicagoan, right? Is a hot dog a sandwich or not? Some say yes, some say it should be in its own category. Well, Jesus adds his own argument to the list. Never, ever, ever, please argue about who is the greatest. Jesus calls that out as being a dumb argument. And in the brilliance of Jesus, right, what does he do? He challenges all of them to remember that whoever wants to be first must be a servant to all and be last of all. And certainly Jesus models that by doing the last thing any human being would want to do. What is that? To go and offer their lives on the cross, to suffer and give life for all in a very unjust and devastating way. That's what Jesus does to model what it is to be great. And then number two, as I pointed out in the children's message, he points to the children. Whoever welcomes such a child in my name welcomes me. So even though we don't know what the disciples were arguing about, they probably weren't arguing about sacrificial love and blessing children. Jesus resets that script. So the good news this morning is that Jesus resets our lives, our stress, our struggle with some practical wisdom and some redeeming love. Who would like a little practical wisdom to get through the next few days? Yes, I would. Who would like to get a reminder of the redeeming love that resets us and makes everything we're about, especially our relationships, a little more helpful? Amen. So God is here through the person of Jesus Christ and the words of James to do just that. Let's look at this verse together. The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. The disciples face the same dilemma that we face in any relationship, organization, business, unfortunately even the church, this temptation being the temptation to compete. I think the word of God this morning makes it clear that out of our many responsibilities of people of faith, 
The temptation to compete can get in the way. We are not called to compete. We are called to be faithful, to collaborate, and let that wisdom of God and love of God, as we said last week, set the agenda. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, love sets the agenda. Why doesn't competition make it into our agenda? Because we are all on the same team. That's what the cross of Christ makes clear. The ever-present cross of Christ, the flowing rivers of baptism unite us, forgiving us of our sinful past, connecting us to a future guaranteed with God in heaven. So with our past guaranteed, with our past forgiven, and our future guaranteed, we are freed up to live in the present, full of life, wisdom, and with the identity that allows us to talk and work through hard things in whatever setting we're in. I ask you to reflect right now, where in your life may you be tempted to compete more than to collaborate with God's forgiving and renewing spirit? In what setting, in what relationship, in what responsibility may you be even subconsciously competing instead of collaborating with the Holy Spirit to make things better, humbly seeking forgiveness, speaking the truth in love, and charting a new path. We as pilgrim have a common goal that is to prevent us from competing. Our goal is stated every single week in the worship and in the bulletin in Christ's love. We gather, prepare, and send. Say that with me. Gather, prepare, and send all those leaders for God's mission in the world. That is the common goal that unites us, that keeps us working together. It doesn't mean we always like each other. It doesn't mean we always get along with each other or agree with each other. That's that goal that brings us back to the table in prayer and worship and fellowship, church, school, hot meals. I'm fascinated to think about the opportunity we have every single week in Pilgrim to remind ourselves of that goal that is peaceable and leads to peace. This goes for any marriage, any nonprofit, any family. And of course, this goes for sports. I bring up sports a lot in sermons because I think it's a good analogy and I love sports. I know it's football season, but allow me to bring up some basketball examples. So next slide. I don't know if you recognize these folks going back a ways. Uh, Larry Bird is on the left. Uh, Magic Johnson on the right. I don't know the guy in the middle. I have no idea who it is, right? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson played as enemies in college, as enemies in the pros, and then they got to play on the 1992 Dream Team, and all of a sudden, they were competing together with all smiles for the same goal. Who is that guy in the middle, by the way? Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, yes, thank you. Next slide. So you had Michael Jordan competing against, okay, can you, I think someone has to go to the, or maybe go to this room and turn on the feedback. We had a huge technical malfunction before the service, so we had to redo the sound. Um, anyway, you can do it from there or from the room here. All right, so there was, thank you. There was uh, two uh, opponents, Dennis Rodman and Michael Jordan. Uh, they played against each other in the late 80s, early 90s, but then we know what, Dennis Rodman joined what team? The Bulls, and they united to, to win three more championships. Then the next slide, a, a modern one for you young people out there. Before we had um, LeBron and Curry going at it, uh, even sometimes coming almost to blows on the court. Next slide. Now in this last Olympics, what did we see? We saw them sleeping, putting the sleep on the opponent together on the same team. It's remarkable what happens for those that were opposed to each other in any way, shape, or form. 
before, once they get on the same team, what brought them together? A common goal. You didn't see my sermon? You weren't here at 8.30. That's amazing. Because that's exactly it. Because it's not just the uniform. You can be on the same team, technically, but you can have different agendas. You can be jealous that one person's getting more playing time, or more of this or more of that. But it's the goal that brings you back together on one team. It's the goal that took these ultra-competitive people to be like, we gotta find a way to work together here. That's what drew people in. That's what reset the situation and the script. And when we get clear on the goal, it's not to win a championship in the world of faith, it's to be faithful to God's call on our lives and on a collective life to gather, prepare, and send all his leaders for God's mission in the world. That's enough, even in difficult times, to refine our footing, our balance, our future. There's a uh, meme going around, or I don't know what you call them, a little image, next slide, that's going around. I just love this. You can't compete with me. Why? I want you to win, too. Anybody like that? So succinct, right? That there should never be a spirit of competition that emerges when we realize we're all on the same team, have a common purpose. This goes for our families, for our marriage, for whatever situation we're in to be able to find that love and that footing, the mission takes over. And as we are at yet another critical moment in our life together as Pilgrim, uh, I just want to brag on Pilgrim as I do, not just in front of this microphone, but out in the world, and as I meet with other pastors and teachers and community leaders, there are very few schools and churches I know that maintain the ministry and the impact that Pilgrim has. In fact, I can't think of another ministry in Chicago that has a pre-K through eighth grade school, an active church, and a weekly community meal. And if there is another ministry, we are among a very elite group in the city of Chicago that does all three with intention and excellence. And this is an image I've often used in our visioning and strategy meetings here at Pilgrim to think about the ways we're all united toward a common goal. Church, school, and hot meals, we are all Pilgrim. And we all invest in the same mission, leaders for God's mission in the world. This is the gift that we have at key moments to tend to our roots, to let love set the agenda, and to remember there is no limit to what God can accomplish when we unite around this mission. It's the goal that unites us. It's the goal that unites us, and God has given it so richly and purposely in our lives together as children. Let us pray. God, we thank you that in your holiness you come to us with mercy and love, that you uh, are able to meet us in our own urges to be selfish and competitive and to melt that away into a spirit of humility, love, and collaboration. We thank you that it says in James that when we draw near to you, you draw near to us. And when we resist the devil, the devil flees from us, and that we are able to build something collectively and compassionately that lets people know you are in this, you are in our lives, and you are helping us apply the practical wisdom and redeeming love that only you can bring. Thank you for the rock that is you and your life and your death and your resurrection. Help us to build whatever we do from this point forward on the rock of your love, of your word, your mission, and your goal. This we pray in Jesus' name.
continue in the robust trust and faith articulated by the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of the saints, the forgiveness of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Your mercy is great. Merciful God, you embrace us on our final pilgrimage from this life. Accompany all who have died and console those who mourn, especially the friends and family of Jim Beery Sr. And at the last, show us the way to eternal life in you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Raise your hands, O Lord, and let all for which we pray, trusting in your mercy and abounding in the hope, practical wisdom, and love that heals us and sets us free. In your holy name we pray. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. We show the peace one to another.
time, we are blessed to have a mission moment from the illustrious Judy Keem. Judy Keem is so important to Pilgrim. She has a whole ward named after her. Um, we're so thankful for her to bring a mission moment uh, this evening. This evening, this morning. Uh, it's been a long morning. <laughs> uh, on regards to our dinner church ministry. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. 
give thanks to God who resets everything every week. This table is set so that we might be reset in forgiveness, in gratitude, in hope to keep on sharing wisdom and love and relationship so that collaboration, community, and communion will become our lives. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, the saints of every time and every place, we praise your name, O God, and join their unending hymn. be seated. At this time, it's my joy to remind you this is not pilgrim's table or denomination's table. It is the Lord's table. La mesa del Señor es el Señor que nos da la bienvenida. It's the Lord that gives us the invitation directly from God's grace. You can receive the bread in your hands and then partake of the uh, presence of God through the cup, which is dark colored as wine, lighter colored grape juice, which we all believe to be representing the living presence of Christ and forgiveness in our lives. If for whatever reason you're not ready to receive, come forward anyway with your arms crossed, and you will receive a blessing. Uh, assisting ministers, please come forward and wait for your ushers to direct. And if you are limited mobility, we will come to you. Just raise your hand as we break from the holy huddle here at Alpha Star. Thank you.
few announcements as we prepare for the coming week. Next Sunday, we have two additional very special activities happening. Uh, during the education hour, next slide, we will be hosting a guest author. Everyone's like, Whoa. Uh, Her name is Dr. Ann Ridge. Uh, she happens to be a member of Bethany UCC, which is four blocks that way. But guess who she also likes to talk about in her book? Pilgrim! <laughs> with her church and school. So uh, I think the uh, uh, Kindle or online version is like, 99 cents or something like that. So go ahead and pick it up in the meantime, or she'll have hard copies for you to sign. But more than that, she's going to share the message the Holy Spirit has given her as a theologian, as a mental health, a mental health advocate, as an environmental activist, as a spiritual director on what can help us heal as a community and as a nation. Does that sound all right? Yay. I think that's good. So let's all show up to give her support and also learn something from her. 9.15 a.m. next Sunday. Uh, also, next Sunday after the 10.30 service, uh, back by popular demand, it's a trip all the way up to by Star Rock to go hiking at Mathiasen, which is a favorite spot for many here in this congregation. So we'll head out after the second service for a uh, hike, and it's open to all ages. It's not the easiest hike, so uh, you can uh, come knowing that it's a little rigorous, but pretty fun. So uh, we'll organize rides and so on. I have to talk to myself or Pastor Anakari uh, for that experience. Uh, any other announcements for this coming week? Uh, next week is confirmation, too. It is. It's so, true. It All right. Sense. Thank you. All right. Please join us downstairs for fellowship and food and conversation. Welcome to everyone who's here. If it's your first time here or first time in a long time, make sure you fill out a connection card in your bulletin so we can know how to be in touch with you how to pray uh, for you and support you in your journey of faith. With that, please stand as we sing our sending hymn.